Alright, in this video, I'm going to do some Bondo work on my Dragon Slayer. Uh, this is actually a really nice cabinet. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not going to totally redo it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fix it up and patch it up. And since it's black, I'm going to, I'm going to do some black. And I'm going to kind of... I, you, you know what? When I'm done, you're not even going to notice what's wrong. So let me show you what's wrong. Down here... First off, I have some missing team molding. That's not a big deal. But down here, <coughs> I have some some chunky missing wood on this side and a little bit on that side. So in this video, I'm just going to do some bondo work. We're going to patch this up, and uh, I'm going to put some team molding on. And you know what? This little bit right here. Um, I have a router, and and uh, I uh, I router uh, a, a new T molding slot, but in this predicament, I think I'm just going to leave it just for structural concerns. I'm going to just go ahead and fill it in, and I'm going to leave a flat spot with no groove, and I'm actually going to end up hot gluing it down. Um, and that may sound funny funny to some of you guys, but I've done it many, 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 many times. You can uh, hot glue team molding down, especially when it's only like two inches like this. It's not that big of a deal. But let me lay this sucker on the ground. My wife's not happy with me, but I'm going to lay this out in the middle of the living room and uh, let's do some body work on Dragon's Lair. Okay, I got like a side view of this thing. And uh, one thing about the side is... There's this mark right there. It's kind of a gouge. And, uh, you know, that's the only bad spot on the sides. I mean, period. Except for way down here is a little nick. So, rather than replace everything and whatever, because the reproduction vinyl that people are using uh, isn't exactly the same, I'd rather just patch up that little tiny spot. And so that's what we're going to do. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do before I lay this sucker down is, yeah, I, I, I got a picture online of a Dragon's Lair cabinet because I was wondering if the sticker covers that up. It does not. So the first thing we're, we're going to do is I'm going to yank out this T-molding and get this crap all over the floor. But yeah, I'm going to yank this stuff out and... Uh, I'm going to lay this sucker on its back. Okay, I'm going to take out this back door here. I'm kind of just going to make sure nothing is going to fall out, <laughs> fall out, fall apart here. Because I'm, going to, because I'm going to lay it on its back. And, let's see here. Whenever you lay a machine on its back, I always kind of just make sure the monitor is mounted. Because I have a... Uh, I have uh, put things together and forgot to mount the monitor. So yeah, it looks like the monitor's together. Let me get this sucker out. I don't want to lay it on its back with the laser disc player inside. So I'm probably going to disconnect all this crap. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is a little dirty. Especially this guy. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, so sooner or later, one of these days, I need to kind of get a new one of those. i seen them for sale somewhere online. I'll have to pick one up. But, let me get this guy out. Laser disc player out. You see my goofy little plug? See, originally that had a, it had like a plug, like a Molex connector to kind of connect it together. And this is not the original player, and it happened to have this on it, so I kind of just put my own goofy temporary thing. It ended up being permanent. Okay, 
Let me close the sucker up. I think we're good. This is nice and empty. So we can start uh, laying the sucker on its back and let's get the Bondo out. Okay, this is uh, a little worse than I, than I thought. Now that I have it on its back, I can kind of see um, the wood's a little worse than I want it to be. But still not a problem, not a big deal. It's just, I, 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 I kind of refuse to, uh, to put new vinyl on this. I want this vinyl on there. But okay, so I'm gonna get this razor blade here. I'm gonna cut a little past where the vinyl ends. Because I'm going to use the planer on this, and I uh, want to be able to sand it and plane it. As long as I get some of this rough edge off, I'll be able to do that. Can I get it started? Wow, this stuff's on better than I thought. Looks like I didn't have to cut that much. Yeah, I'll come back to that. Okay. Not really too happy about this. See, it's it's about a quarter inch of water damage on the bottom. There's really no swelling. Just that quarter inch where it looks like maybe not even water damage, like it got drug. And uh You know, I think I'm going to catch this with a rasp, kind of drag it all off, and bond up this whole bottom. And then on the very bottom, eighth of an inch, I'll probably paint it black. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay, I got this Space Invaders plastic here, and I'm kind of just going to cut around the edge. I don't want to get any more than them. What's lifted off. I'm going to go ahead and bondo this. Yeah, that's actually straighter than I thought. That's good. Let me come over here. Get some of this crap off. I hate doing this, but the wood is too soft underneath it for me to glue it back down. But that's actually not too bad. Not too bad. Looks like it's a little loose here still, but there's going to be Bondo covering that. Okay. That'll work. Okay, I'm a little short on the hardener, so I'm going to mix a little bit of fiberglass hardener in there. Trust me, it's the same stuff. A little bit of that stuff. And what I did is I got uh, this uh, old uh, marquee that somebody made a translate for. And over here, I'm going to kind of just fill that in. Okay, let me get a little bit of this. Bondo. When you work with Bondo, it's, uh, in my opinion, it's always a smart thing to have some acetone and paper towels nearby. Because the acetone cleans off Bondo wonderfully. Unless, of course, whatever you're working with it shouldn't be wiped with acetone, so use your own judgment. But I uh, didn't have much hardener, so mix a little bit of that fiberglass hardener. It's exactly the same stuff, it's just not in paste form. So it may look like it's mixed a little light, but it's fine. Now another good tip is to, is uh, 
which I didn't do, is if you leave some regular Bondo out, leave it out for like a week, and it gets thick and kind of, uh, it kind of dries up a little bit. And if you, if you leave it out for a week or so and then mix it up, it's good for stuff like this because it lets you kind of like play to mold it into the crack, you know? So, okay, let me uh, move the camera over here so it's not so much in my way. I'm going to have my beautiful wife hold the area back here. And I'm just kind of kind of going to pack it in there. Okay, go ahead, Kelly. Now, I put a piece of tape on the outer, outer edge so we know it's still straight. Or so Kelly here knows it's still straight. Just kind of got to thump it in there. Oh, by the way, now I'm getting Bondo on the carpet. Oh, right? <laughs> it's terrible, right? Believe it or not, if you get Bondo on your carpet, don't pick it off. Let, let it, it let it dry. <laughs> let it dry. It it comes right off. You'll thank us later. You'll thank us later. <laughs> Can always come in again. When this as this hardens up, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more crap. Probably shoulda, coulda put another piece of plexi here. But oh well. We let me give it give it a few minutes for that to harden up. Okay, this is starting to set up a little bit. I put uh, I put my putty knife here, kind of hold it together a little bit. I get my razor blade, kind of just gonna start it a little bit. Boom. Okay. And let me go around here so we can kind of see my straight edge right there. Not bad. And what I'm going to use now is this guy. It's a planer, a rasp planer. And let me see if I can get a good, good angle with the camera. And I'm going to get this crap all over the carpet. It's going to... Uh, it's going to uh, vacuum out, but yeah, 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 we're good. Try to get as much on the game instead on the floor as I can. We're getting there. Now, as this stuff dries, it gets hot, warm, you know. Getting it all over the carpet. Fun for the whole family. Now on the sides, I really can't use the rasp or the planer so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this razor blade. I'm going to just cut it down some. Get as close as I can before I have to use the rasp. And I might have to come back with a second coat. That's okay. You kind of got to work quickly because you're racing time. You know what I mean? 
Alright, let me get some more of this. One nice thing about black is it's very forgiving. You can always patch stuff in. Okay, I'm getting to the ed edge here. I'm going to have to use that rasp a little bit. Okay, hit it just a little bit right here. I'm going to go backwards. So it doesn't dig in so hard. And we are looking awesome. Okay, let me try to get some picture over here. Let's see what we have here. Definitely going to need another coat on the inside. Let me get the razor blade. Kind of cut in. There it is. This is wow. This is really close. I'm gonna need very minimal sanding. Okay, I went ahead and I did this side also. And uh, the, the the edge isn't totally perfect, but I'm gonna I'm gonna cover it in team molding. It's gonna be painted black. I mean, it's fine. Now I ran out of the hardener, so I went ahead and I mixed a uh, fiberglass hardener in the in the other side. It's just kind of weird to see it white. This is dry. This is hardened, but uh, it's kind of weird to see it white. But I mean, I I basically had to do zero sanding. Um, that's that's one thing I love about the uh, cheese grater, but. Uh, my wife is wigging out because I left a huge mess in here. Check out the floor. Yeah. So she's wigging out. She wants to clean up. I'm going to let her clean. Uh, <clears throat> also, here's this spot right here. Um, I, I filled this in. Now, this hole is supposed to be here. That's going to be covered because there's a, a carriage bolt supposed to go in here. So the carriage bolt's going to go in. It's going to cover that up. And this is just some of that, uh, some of that gouge that I filled in. And it looks kind of bad, but don't worry, I have some tricks here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some uh, gloss black paint. And I'm going to mix it with some linseed oil. And I'm going to thin it with some acetone. Okay, I'm going to get that on a rag, and I'm going to wipe the entire cabinet down with that concoction. And it'll blend like this kind of, see how it's this colored? That'll cover right in. It'll look great. And one of the reasons it looks like this is because I used some acetone on a paper towel to try to uh, wipe away the extra crap, because it was all over here. So I, I wiped, wiped away the, ex the excess with the acetone on a paper towel, and uh, it the acetone itself slightly discolored my vinyl, which is not a big deal. It's gonna look great when it's done. My wife is just as much a part of this hobby as I am. And uh, one way that proves it is she let me do this to her floor. <laughs> but yeah, let me move this cabinet a little bit so she can get, it, get the rest of it. to before I set this up I'm just gonna do a light light coat of a uh, uh, black spray paint now I'm using armor all and and uh, I'm going to mix some linseed oil and 
I'm sorry, not armor. Rust-Oleum. I'm going to mix some more Rust-Oleum paint with it. I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you in a minute. But uh, if you're going to use Rust-Oleum or Krylon or whatever, make sure you use Rust-Oleum. Make sure you use that same brand all the way through until you're done. But okay, here I'm going to get a little, little hit right there. Just kind of blend that a little bit. I'm going to do it over here. Just a little tap. When I'm done, you're not going to be able to tell. It's going to be all blended. Here's a little spot here. And let's do a little spot over here. If I could get in there. You're not going to see it with the camera very well. But there we go. But just so I don't see it on the team molding, I'm going to go ahead and hit a little bit more. Over here. I'm going to do a little bit over here. Just so you don't see it in the team holding. Now I just did a dusting. I light, light dusting. I'm not worried about the carpet here. It's just a hair. I'm done. There's no more spray paint going to happen here. The rest is all going to be a rubbed on finish. So my beautiful wife has wiped down the machine. All of our touch ups. It looks great from here. It looks beautiful. I can't even tell that it's been patched up. But, that's, uh, it, you know, if you look really hard, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really hard to see. But if you look really hard, you can see that there's one color, of one black isn't really matching up with the other black. Uh, let me try to get, and here especially you can tell. Now, um, I did a quick, like, half-ass little touch-up here. That's one little shot of spray paint. That's the most obvious for sure. But I'm going to fix all that, and let me tell you how. Okay, this is my little makeshift mess over here, and this is what I'm going to do. First off, I have a bucket, I'm going to pour some linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, in that bucket. Now, the reason I'm using linseed oil is because it will allow me to wipe this on without it drying in my hands, okay? So I have some linseed oil, and I have some Rust-Oleum. I'm staying with the same brand that I sprayed with, some Rust-Oleum Black. And I pour some of that in, okay? Okay. Yeah, mix that up a little bit. Now linseed oil will mix with oil-based paint, no problem. And here is a little bit of oil-based polyurethane. Pour a little bit of that in there. And what that's going to do is it will, uh, alright, when linseed oil dries, it dries a little gummy. And this will harden up the finish. And one, let me mix this up. One last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some acetone in that. And what this is going to do is it's going to make this whole solution dry quickly. Pour a bunch of that in there. It'll thin it out so it doesn't dry so it doesn't dry while I'm using the rug, using the rug, using the rag, but it's going to you know, dry it quickly. So I'm going to stir that up a little bit. Show that in camera there. So this concoction will actually help me blend all these colors together and I can wipe it with a rag. And you're not going to be able to tell. It's going to be it's going to be beautiful. Okay, let's mix that up. Give me a few minutes of mixing. Okay. Yep, that's mixed up. So I got an old t-shirt here. 
And I'm gonna move the camera over here. And let me let me do the absolute worst worst spot right here. That is by far the ugliest spot. So let me get this rag wet a little bit. Okay, let me squeeze it out a little bit. It's a little too wet. I'm gonna wipe that on. There we go. Now I'm going to, uh, Kelly, can you move the camera back a little bit? Mm -hmm. Move the camera back. It's hard to tell on camera, but I'm going to wipe this entire thing down. The entire thing down is going to give it a more of a rejuvenated black. It's going to fill in any little scratches with black and it's going to dry and just it's going to look great. This works great with vinyl, this works great with uh, you, you know what it works great with? Donkey Kong cabinets with the black. Now if you were to just spray black on a Donkey Kong cabinet you can it looks like it's been painted but if you were to rub on a black finish on a Donkey Kong cabinet, it it looks like it came from the factory, you know. Okay, I'm okay. good. Okay, so what I did is I wiped the entire entire cabinet down with that uh, concoction I showed you, and uh, it's almost dry right now. But before I put tea molding on, I mean, literally, literally, if, if you put it on, you got to put this stuff on thin. Um, the light is actually making it look really glossy. It's not that glossy. <laughs> but uh, um, if you put this stuff on really thin, it should dry in, you know, a good, good four or five hours. But what I'm doing is I'm going to wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll put the team molding on, but uh, looks great, man. I mean, you cannot tell that anything was touched up or patched. I mean, it looks looks beautiful. Now I have you see how I, I kind of ruined the uh, Cinematronics raised letter. I have a uh, silver paint marker which works beautiful on these on these raised uh, letter coin doors. But, uh, let's see if I can get an angle from the side here. I'm kind of, let me take, let me get my camera. I'm going to try to go over here. Boy, the, uh, the light makes it look super sparkly shiny. It's really not that bad, geez. But, uh, this is actually the bad side. Um, there's, there's a scratch that it was more pronounced before I did this. But now it's it's almost gone. But guess what? The sticker is going to go here. So the cider is going to go there. So no problem. Now here's a really good gouge right here. I mean, right here is where my bolt goes to hold the control panel in. There's a little spot. I can touch that up with like a little bit of black paint. There's a little line here. That that that's minor, minor, minor. But there's the bottom. This is this is the worst side. Right here is where a carriage bolt will go in to hold the back door, hold the back drawer in, I should say. And here's the inside. So I'm gonna give it a give it a good 24 hours or so, and uh, it won't be this glossy 24 hours from now. It'll look just like plastic, just like the vinyl or whatever that's you know the vinyl that's on. Looks great though. Looks great. Yeah. But I didn't have to change the vinyl. I, I wanted the original vinyl because it has its own texture. Then the, the reproduction stuff, it's not the same. It's close, but it's not the same. Anyways, I think uh, this is definitely good enough. When I get the team molding on and whatever, it, it's going to be great instead of having to basically. It's almost like you're ruining a cabinet when you 
start putting new vinyl and everything on it. It's almost like, is it the same cabinet still? You know? It's a, you might as well just build a new cabinet. This, this was definitely savable, though. Okay, it's been, it's been about four hours. And, uh, it's dry. Totally, totally dry to the touch. So, I'm going to put my team molding on. This is just uh, wrinkled leather team molding. This is what uh, Cinematronics put on from the factory. Uh, so, let's get started. Okay, I got the back on so far. And I'm going to get my razor blade out. And I'm going to cut this right here. And this looks like it's probably going to be the only spot that actually has to be cut. Okay, got a little notch cut out there. And I'm really putting some ass into it. Okay, I have got this rubber mallet here, and it was kind of dirty, so I put some tape over it. But I'm just kind of tapping it on. Okay, I'm um, going to pull out my secret weapon. That's hot glue. And uh, I'm just going to kind of Take this in here. And lay this down. And hold it. Team molding is on. Cabinet looks beautiful. Be a beautiful. Now this is the original control panel overlay, and it's nice enough, I'm just going to let it be. And there's some stuff here, I'm just going to let it be. I've got bigger fish to fry, I've got other things to buy. Um, but yeah, here's the inside. T-molding looks beautiful. I could wipe that down. That's a little, I, could, I could wipe that down a little bit. My plastic is eh, so so. But I could wipe that down too. I need to get some goof off or something right there. But uh, beautiful. That's that's the original uh, marquee, and it looks looks fine. The colors are okay. I'm gonna leave it be. Leave it be. Looking great though. Um, you know what? I think uh, I'm going to order some side art, like, right now. Nice, nice corners. There it is. That's Dragon's Lair, guys. Looks awesome. Mm, I could touch this up a little bit, touch that up. No big deal. I'll touch it up. That's that.